Welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. This is episode number 19. Last time we talked about building the cron monitor module, which is essentially just a simple demonstration module that is going to allow you to learn how to build an administration form, which is what we did last time and you can see on the screen here, as well as today learn how to implement hook cron and how to send emails from within a Drupal module. So as you can see before, we created this administration form and you can go and look at episode number 18 for how to actually do that and here's the code that we ended up with. And today we're going to start by implementing a very simple hook called hook cron. All hook cron does is allow you to perform periodic actions. So th cron is set up on your Drupal site and you can configure it to run at specific intervals depending on server settings and also you can, I believe you can set it from the administration interface as well. So hook cron, we're going to go ahead and grab this example. Ours is going to be much simpler than this, but we'll use that as a starting point. So we're going to add our comment block and paste in the code. I'm just going to go ahead and start by getting rid of all of that. And as, be, as I mentioned before, our mo module is called cron monitor. So we replace hook with that. And basically anything we run here will be run periodically anytime cron is run on our Drupal site. This could be running some database queries, or in this case, sending an email. Pretty much anything you would need to do, any tasks that you would need to perform on a periodic basis. The important thing to note is that no user is necessarily causing this. This could be something caused by the server or run at periodic intervals. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We only want to run or send this email if this checkbox here is checked. And that is in the that's a setting in the variables table. And you can see we created this checkbox using the form API and we saved it in this variable called cron monitor enable. So what I'm going to do is a simple if statement. If cron monitor enable, then we're going to send the cron monitor email. And that's all that n needs to happen with our cron. We could set it up to run once a day, for instance, using uh, some PHP date functions, but in this case we're just going to have it run every single time that cron is run. As I mentioned before, not necessarily the most practical example, but it is uh, going to demonstrate a few major points. The next thing we're going to look at is hook mail. And anytime you want your module to be able to send email, you're going to create a hook mail implementation. We're going to go ahead and start, same as before, copying this. We'll be getting rid of most of it, but use it as a good baseline to make sure we get all the correct parameters for the function. We'll go ahead and paste that in there. As I mentioned before, I'm just going to get rid of this. We'll start with pretty much a blank function here. Add our module name, and you can see there are three parameters here. The first one is the key. And this allows us to implement multiple email templates within our module. So we could have a key for multiple different messages that our module may need to send out. In this case, we're only going to have one. Uh, the message, and that's where you can actually add the subject and body fields to the email. And params are extra variables that can be passed in. We're not going to use any in this case, but just note that extra variables could be passed in here and use, you know, for replacement patterns or to trigger, you know, different actions to happen in your hook mail function. First thing we're going to do is just write a simple switch statement on uh, the key variable. Oops. And in this case, we're going to call, we're going to assume our key is cron monitor email. We can 
call this anything we wanted. Just keeping it relatively straightforward. We're going to add a subject. We're going to wrap everything in the T function, which is just a good best practice to follow. So the subject is going to be, this is a cron monitor report. I'm going to add a body, and this can just be an array, so you can add additional uh, lines that are going to be appended on to the end of this email body. Okay, and I'll go over what I'm doing here. Basically, I'm adding a line at the top of the email that says, this is a report from Cron Monitor on at site name. And this at site name is going to get replaced. This is a, using the T function, you can have replacement patterns. So in this case, it's going to replace at site name with this variable, which is going to pull from the variables table. So it's going to pull the site name. That means if you drop this module on any site, it should pull whatever the actual site name of your website is or it'll fall back to test.codekarate.com. We're going to add one more piece to the body. And in this case, we're going to want to add the variable that we set here, this cron monitor email text. So I'm just going to grab this and go ahead and paste this in. Uh, one thing to note is you're probably going to want to read up on the hook mail documentation more. I'm not doing anything with translation really right now, even though it's something that you should pay attention to, especially if there's a chance that you're going to need to make the site multilingual. In this case, it's just a simple admin email. I am running it through the T function, which is just the best practice, but I'm not actually ensuring that it's getting properly translated here. So now we actually need, now that we have this set up, we have to actually call this. And in order to trigger the sending of the email, we're going to use the Drupal mail function. You can see there's some documentation on what Drupal mail does. It's pretty extensive, but it tells you all the different things that you can do with it. In our case, it's going to be very simple. The first parameter is the module. So our module is cron monitor. Then it's the key, which is going to match this down here. So it's cron monitor email. Just go ahead and copy that in, paste it there, and see the next one is who this is going to get sent to. Uh, you could make this dynamic, you could make it a variable. I'm just going to go ahead and hard code this in for now. The language, and I'm going to just use the language default. And you could also go ahead and add extra parameters as I mentioned before who the email should be from. If you leave it null, it should default to this, whatever the site email address is. And if you actually want to trigger the sending, but that'll default to true. So this is all we need to get a very basic email sent using Drupal. So assuming I didn't mistype anything there, everything looks good, I can come over here. Uh, I'm gonna go to the status report that'll tell me the last time cron was run and I will go ahead and make sure I run cron again. You can also run cron through uh, drush, just use drush cron. It's taking its time here. As you can see, it, it's not a lot of code to get a basic email working, but it does get a little more extensive if you want to add all the translation functions and if you really want to make the email configurable. So the last time cron was run was 15 minutes ago. So I'm going to go ahead and run cron manually here. And if all goes well, I should receive an email. As you can see, I received an email and it says, this is a cron monitor report as the subject. It says this is a report from cron monitor on test.codecrowdy.com. It says cron has run on your Drupal site. 
I could, of course, um, go back, change that message in the administration settings. So I could change this second section here. And I change that, resend it. It's going to then print out the new message. If I go ahead and I disable that setting, I'll go ahead and do that just so we can show that it works. If I disable it and I run cron, I can refresh my inbox as much as I want and nothing is coming through. So it's all working. As you can see, it's very simple to get set up. Uh, the documentation is a little overwhelming if you're just really getting into Drupal, but there are a lot of good examples out there. So you can read the documentation, look at some of the examples in the comments, and really learn from there on how to get your module to send emails. Uh, thank you for watching The Daily Dose of Drupal. This has been brought to you by CodeKarate.com. You can follow me on Twitter at SMThomas3, and you can sign up for the CodeKarate.com newsletter. Until next time, thanks for watching.